Hello everyone, it is Mike Levin on Wednesday, February 10th, 2021. And there's a few things I'm going to do to set up my PC. And the first thing is to establish a journal so I can just have a place to put a uh, list of things that I want to do. And it's interesting, uh, I don't have all my tooling on here yet. Normally I would do a journal inside of uh, my preferred text editor, Vim, underneath the Windows subsystem for Linux in a GitHub repo that I keep. However, until I get there, I'm all about looking at the uh, things that are built into the system. So without further ado, I am going to pull up Notepad. Uh, I should probably get rid of this sort of stuff. This is what I don't like in my um, in my start bar uh, or search bar, I guess in this case, uh, a history of things that I have actually uh, searched on. I don't necessarily want that to pop up in a video. So let's take a look if there's settings here, options. This is a bonus for the video, definitely not what I was... Uh, going to show at first, but we go into search settings and uh, device history, search history. Oh, we turn that off. So let's see if that does it. It still has this one here. This is top apps. Let's see if there's a reference to top apps. Hmm. Searching windows. <clears throat> Find my files, classic or enhanced. That's very interesting. I actually am not a fan of the search indexer because it uh, slows down your machine seriously in the background when you're not expecting it. Included locations. It's just doing the start menu and, uh, oh, everything inside of user data. So it's actually uh, indexing a lot. I'll take care of that at a different time. And uh, let's see, more details. Nothing I see, well, maybe, you know, I'll take care of that later. That's not my primary thing, but that'll be something I'll be adding to the journal. This is <clears throat> part of idea capture. So it's important to note that a lot of what I do is about idea capture. So I'm gonna bring up <clears throat> Notepad. You may, you may be like, what, what? Well, Notepad is a fairly different program than it was in the past. I, um, I'm fairly sure they completely recoded it from the bottom up. But if I were to say today is Wednesday, February 10th, 2021, you might say, oh, that's such a small font. How can I use that? No problem. So Notepad is a great way to get a very focused writing environment, surprisingly, uh, much different than it used to be. And then I will do uh, hello world. I'll make uh, this into a headline so I can always sort of detect uh, headlines. And uh, so you can see I'm, I'm using markdown as part of this. And I'll, I'll label it with a main headline like Levin's Temporary Daily Journal. And then I'll make this a subhead. So I put these two things in here, these two hash marks, before I make every data entry. And uh, anything that displays markdown will start to format this very nicely. And I will do a uh, save as. And I'll drop it into my documents directory. And uh, I'll make a folder for it so it's, things aren't all over the place. Uh, so we do a new folder, journal, and go into that directory. And then I'll simply name it journal.txt. So now I have inside of, oh, I didn't get rid of the asterisk, so it's an invalid file name journal.txt. So now when I close out of this, if I go into Explorer, which is Windows key E, you should all get very used to it, and I go into my documents directory and I go into journal, 
uh, you'll see my journal.txt. Uh, one of the very typical mods that people do to their machines early on is to go into view options and to get rid of the uh, box that hides their extensions. Open for single click. It's going to be the view tab. Don't show hidden files. We want to show hidden files and uh, hide extensions of known file types. We don't want that to occur. And that should apply to the defaults now, so it should be this way forever forward. So you can now see it's journal.txt. Now if I double click it from there, it comes up in Notepad. And that's pretty good. I'd like it to come up uh, full screen like that and with a larger font. However, that's probably a violation of the 80-20 rule. I won't be on Notepad very long. But what I will do is I will copy a shortcut. Remember you click drag with a right mouse button or the right hand side of your trackpad. Things are changing. And now you can see that is a link to the original file. It's not the actual original file. You can double click it to pull up the journal. Uh, but more importantly now I can go to properties and say, oh, I don't see keyboard shortcuts. So I got to make sure that's really a link. It's not a link. I lied to you. See the way uh, you got that there and that there. That shows it's a link. So I might have copied it out of my documents folder. I did. That's not what I want. So we try once more. And now I pay attention to what I'm doing. That didn't do it. So I right click here. I guess it's not very common to create a link to a, uh, a text file, right? This uh, violates the rule of things that very typically you can do here. So I'm going to try a little trick. I'm going to try dropping this into, oh, I won't take that there. Because anything dragged out of your start bar is easy to turn into a link. Create shortcut. That should do it. That is a shortcut. We put that out here. And I'll just put J on it because you see I name things basically to show me um, you know what the keyboard shortcut is. So I keep that in there, I get rid of that. We can do the demonstration again, that, that pulls it up. However, we can really tell that it's a link to the original file and not the file itself because of that little thing that puts over the icon. But now when I go into properties, here's my keyboard shortcut and I can do control J. And now to start my journal, you'll remember from my last video, I like these virtual screens. I like being able to go like this and ju jump between different virtual screens. And I always like to put my journal on the first one. So control J right now will bring my journal up and I'll make it nice and big for you. And I will put my to-do list. Set up journal. Done. And uh, hide clock. I don't believe in showing the clock as you go here because it's uh, very distracting. We have clocks all over the place in our phone. We don't need the additional distraction in our field of view, uh, whether we like it or not. And, uh, and we're trying to get into the zone and the flow. So uh, we'll be hiding the clock. We'll uh, try to turn off Cortana. And if not, we can at least hide this right here. Show Cortana button. So I already hit the button, but I might try and turn it off. Uh, three finger swoosh. When I go like this, I'm actually using Windows control windows on the left hand side and the arrow keys on the right hand side. And it's just a pleasure. Uh, however, and I can do the three finger swoosh up to get to here and I can add a bunch more virtual screens. So you can see me jump between them like this. Lots of fun. However, there is a three finger swoosh way to go left and right. But as you can see, it's only switching me between my 
running software, which my screen recorder is the only thing going right now. At least there. Oh, there's an interesting thing. It's contains like alt tab on whatever uh, screen you're on. So um, change three finger swoosh. Trackpad swoosh, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about. To switch virtual desktops, right? And then I want, um, you'll see how Notepad is here, but if I switch over to this virtual desktop, the Notepad icon disappears. You kind of forget track of what's running, but it's perfectly possible to click that and then to have it pop over to screen one so you can pop between all your virtual screens by clicking them here and have the same functionality as if they were all windows piled up on the same screen and you can pop between them. I'm leaving the taskbar you'll notice. I could get rid of the taskbar with auto hide but over the years that has really turned out to not be worth it. So uh, I guess those are really the things I want to do just to uh, settle into the machine before I uh, start installing new software. OBS for live streaming, uh, Anaconda, uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, and the uh, X terminal, uh, X server <laughs> system so that the Linux software can have graphical user interfaces and I can run like the graphical version of Chrome uh, under Windows subsystem for Linux. But I digress, that's a whole bunch of other stuff. <clears throat> this covers this for now. I'll save that. And I'll have a place to come back to when I start new journal entries. The purpose of this uh, particular video was to get my daily journal going. And I put these kind of in the order. I use them and arrange them on the screens. So here we've got the two virtual screens. And what I do is I make sure I'm all the way to the left, load my journal, make it go full screen, go here, load my browser actually really Jupyter Notebook. So here it's really Jupyter Notebook and uh, you know in tab one and by launching Jupyter Notebook it forces the browser uh, to run. And uh, let's see, I'll probably actually want to hide my icons here. There's no reason you guys should see what my websites are. Yeah, I'm a Hulu customer. So let's see, yeah. So there you go, journal, browser, journal, browser. And whenever you need to go back to, whenever you ask yourself where to begin, you begin at screen one, and you'll always know that your notes for the day, your thoughts are always accumulating here. And when you make a new entry, you just keep putting them in at the top. So you're pushing your journal entries down every time you go. And uh, it's blogging without any special software about it, uh, other than a text editor. And you can keep a file such as this for your entire life. I, I guess I should make a few points about really what I'm doing here. It's, uh, you know, important concepts about daily journal. One, <laughs> it will be a git repo probably a private one on github and a sub point of that is it will be with you your entire life you can keep your journal on multiple machines and I'm not going to list all the wonderful, you know, advantages of uh, Git itself. Just know that having your journal in a Git repo in the first place, a version control system of software, and on GitHub in particular, your journal is safe with you for life. Maybe except against hackers, but that's always another story and always a concern with any thing that you decide to keep online. You might not want to keep it online. Who knows? There's lots of ways to tackle this. But other important concepts about your, your daily journal, it's always loaded. And I guess sub points of that is it's always full screen on your first virtual desktop. 
you do use virtual desktops, right? And that means it's in a fixed position. You always know where to find it. And it's your way of maintaining human statefulness. I am not sure <clears throat> how much sense that's going to make to people out there, but there is this concept of whether things are stateful or uh, stateless, no side effects. And journals are so that you can remember things. And so when I drop off of a project and come back to a project, it's really easy to do because I can pick up where I can let where I left off, reinstantiate my thoughts by reading over my last journal entry. I almost can't stand looking at this without my uh, hyphens to separate uh, daily entries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I use eighty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is about the width of a standard uh, text um, terminal. Uh, so when I talk about uh, what I'm going to be moving over to, instead of doing this in Notepad, I'll be doing it through what's called a Unix terminal or a Linux terminal. And very typically, those get opened to 80 columns wide, really a lot larger than that these days. <clears throat> There's a lot of reasons why you get advantages when you try and keep things around 80 columns wide. Uh, for here, it's just a visual thing. So when I make an entry tomorrow, I really just do this to delineate it. See? And uh, I guess a space between the date there. And then you can always do a subheadline, right? See? And if this ever formats into Markdown one day for actual display, it'll look pretty. It'll look like, you know, time and design went into it. I could use a system like Jekyll to move the plain text file into a fully formatted up and prettified website if I wanted to, this general technique. Uh, so there you have it. That's uh, setting up a, a daily journal with what comes with Windows 10 these days. Notepad is much, much, much better than it used to be. Control S will do a save. Uh, let's see what quit is. I'll start to learn the keyboard shortcuts. Oh, there's no exit. I guess they don't want you to quit accidentally. And uh, there you have it. That's a pretty good video. It's a, it's a wrap. I'll take that. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe.